Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing Leg End by the band Henry Cow. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. So let's put this one right out of the way. This album's title is spelled as legend, but is supposed to be read as leg end. And I'll elaborate about this further on down the video, but for now, here's some of my favorite bits from this album. So today's episode of 365 Days of Prague will be discussing the band Henry Cow and their debut album Leg End, but in another sense I'm also going to be talking a lot about the rock and opposition movement known for short as Rio. So in this video I'll kind of just mix and match the two, I'll talk on each one, I'll kind of just go back and forth within them, and honestly while they are separate beings, of course one being a Rio band and one being Rio itself, I will kind of just make parallels and talk about them as if they were one thing, so excuse me for that. So the prog subgenre of Rio, also rock in opposition, usually oftentimes goes hand with hand with avant prog, which is basically an avant-garde representation of creating progressive rock music. Now while most Rio bands are also avant prog bands, the same doesn't go in the opposite direction, with a lot of avant prog albums and artists not being considered as Rio. In fact, Rio is a really small movement consisting of only a fair few of groups which actually makes it quite remarkable to see that they even got their own classification as a subgenre. But what does rock in opposition mean? Well, on its surface it basically means music that is written, composed and performed, that's a big aspect of it, in unconventional matters which you might call oppository of the common practice in most of the music business. And of course, as being given by the name when talking about Rio, we are specifically referring to rock music. Now many of you that are hearing the definition for rock and opposition for the first time might actually bat an eye at what I'm saying, because under this definition, prog music should mostly be considered as rock and opposition, seeing as it goes in the opposite direction of what's known and well accepted in creating traditional rock music. And well, here comes the second part that makes Rio so special, and that's the opposition ideology. No, no, I'm just joking, we're not doing a documentary, but it is still important for us to understand that Henry Cow are basically the pioneers of Rio because they've introduced their own political ideologies which were usually set in the opposition tone of things and they mainly portrayed those ideologies through their music itself. And this is where we also start understanding why Rio became a movement. Well, you see, Henry Cow were by far the most successful Rio band in in the 70s and alongside them they wanted to join in with a few other bands which were practically sharing the same ideologies as them and basically creating this group which is known as rock and opposition so they partnered up with some bands that you might know like some la mama's mana from sweden or even stormy six from italy which i've already reviewed on the series and together all of these groups would be involved in joint musical projects performing alongside one another and basically helping each and every 
everyone grow. Now the real movement really didn't last that long and unfortunately most of it dissipated by the end of the 70s but from then on we do still get to see some real bands emerging. There is a second wave of real and there's of course bands that define themselves as real but technically aren't like the Cardiacs but that's a story for another day. But just to sum things up the main idea of it is the same as tequila. You can make tequila wherever you want in the world but as long as it doesn't come out of the tequila region in Mexico it doesn't count as tequila and the same goes for Rio if you weren't there when it began you're not really Rio. But Henry Cow didn't start with a bunch of world changers it actually started with only two teenagers that learned together in Cambridge. And these two hoodlums were multi-instrumentalists Fred Frith and Tim Hodgkinson. Both of them met in the Cambridge University studying music in 1968 and they had a like-minded approach to music which was very much open-minded and experimental and both of them would go on to play music together inspired by genres such as Dada Blues and Neo Hiroshima. Now I have no idea what Neo Hiroshima is. I saw it written on Wikipedia and I tried looking it up but I couldn't find any information about it but it sounds so unique and exotic so if anyone knows what Neo Hiroshima means I'd love it if you let me know in the comments because it sounds so freaking badass. Now I do find it right to note another person here and that's Roger Smalley. He was the professor at Cambridge that taught the two youngsters and exposed them to bands and artists such as Frank Zappa, Captain Beefheart and even Soft Machine. All of whom would prove vital to the development of the Henry Cow sound in the later years. And also in 1968 Henry Cow would form and see the addition of several other members which would prove quintessential to the Henry Cow sound. And I personally always love it when there's a band that each and every member adds his own thing to the band and is also influential in being there. And that year they would tour around and they would do so for the next couple of years. Mainly they would actually support Pink Floyd in their concerts back in the day and so the year progressed until in 1973 these guys would release their debut album called Leg End. Now there is much more that I can say about Henry Cow. believe me there are loads of loads of pages of information about them but I'll have to stop here in sake of keeping this one short and concise. And again we haven't even reached the actual personal part of my opinion about this album but luckily I really don't have that much to say in that regard. But don't get me wrong I don't think that this debut album is a bad album. I think that it's pretty much fine and it takes a lot of inspiration from Captain Beefheart as well as Frank Zappa of course if you've taken away the marimba and used way less vocals. And while I am a big fan of dissonant and unorthodox compositions much like Albert Marcour or Frank Zappa I found this one to be kind of a lackluster to me in my opinion and I think that mostly falls to the fact that I kind of got used to this type of music. So I can recall the first time listening to Frank Zappa of course I started off with where most people after like his runtime started which was with Hot Rats and I remember just being amazed by it not knowing what to think of it but at the same time loving every single bit of it. And throughout the years I wasn't really exposed to that much type of avant music and later on when I started doing this series I kind of just started dwelling into this world more and more to the point where now not everything amazes me in the same way and it takes a bit more to actually get me going. You see today's album's music is everything and nothing new at the same time. It is absurd, it is uncompromising, it is very unconventional. But at the same time it's really not that special. I do believe that artists that go down this avant-garde path need to find a way in order to make their music special and when they don't do so we kind of just get a jumbled mess of a lot of different ideas played in the most absurd of ways. And while maybe back then this type of music was something basically unheard of especially in the UK and these guys were managing to get actual success because it was so unheard of I do believe that today's music kind of just challenges 
this one a bit too much to the point where it doesn't seem that special to me. And dare I say it, I do believe that this album is a bit of an album that is weird for the sake of being weird, which is something that I don't look kindly for most of the time. There were a handful of standout moments that I really liked from this album and I've compiled them all in the favorite bits section, but when it comes to other bits from this album I really don't have a lot. I do believe that most of it was forgotten on me and honestly I don't see myself coming back to this one anytime soon. But while most of this album is meanderings and shenanigans in the most absurd of ways, I do believe that there's one song that I have to point out and that's the last track on the album called Nine Funerals for the Citizen King. This song is a quintessential Henry Cow song and for an interesting reason nonetheless. This is the first instance in which they've introduced political ideologies into their music and put them on an album. While the start of this album up until this point was basically just a way of expressing their own unique ideas in musical form, this one actually goes ahead to criticize society and the government itself. Now, I wouldn't really be saying that I know what this one is about as I've never lived in the UK nor did I live there back in the 70s so I really don't know what this has to do with anything but it does have the sense of being very much politically charged and going at it with its lyrics. And this of course would prove to be a big motif of what Henry Cow would do in their later albums basically making them into some sort of propaganda albums in a way that was never seen before and again which ultimately caused the rise of the real movement. So yeah, all in all this album is an album to remember but maybe not for its music itself but for the importance of it that it has in the prog world and specifically for starting the real movement. I do have a lot of friends that really like Henry Cow and really love this first album of theirs and considering the fact that it is considered to be their most accessible work, I am kind of doubtful whether I'm actually gonna love some of their other albums and luckily we do have one more to review this year and it will be coming later on down the road and it's called In the Praise of Learning. And it's called In Praise of Learning and it's their third album on their four album discography. But until then I guess I'll just have to wait and see what happens so let's move on to talking about the cover. I'll put this one out of the way. I love, love, love this cover. I've known it for a long while and I like every single bit of it. I would genuinely buy this vinyl record just to see the cover, hold it in my hand and be impressed by what it is. And the man behind this cover is no other than Ray Smith, who for all intents and purposes in the early 70s was sort of an extra member in the band. He would go on tour and perform with Henry Cow live, but instead of playing any conventional instrument, he would actually do some other things on stage, like reading texts or ironing or miming with glove puppets. Yeah, I know, it's pretty odd. And when it came time to create a cover for this debut album of theirs, it was Smith's job to do so, and he wanted to use the image of a sock mainly because it had nothing to do with the band or the music itself. Now this is also where I'm gonna note the fact that the name Henry Cow doesn't have an explanation, it just happened to be the band chose it and it doesn't have any reasoning behind it. Now Smith opted to not put the band's name on the cover despite them actually wanting to and personally I love that decision, I always love when covers don't include text on them, at least not in a very straightforward manner. And this sock motif would prove pivotal for the band and their next two albums would also include a sock on their cover, each one basically featuring a sock that represents the feeling of the album itself. And technically the way that this cover was drawn is also quite beautiful in my opinion. This one was made using a pastry bag and some acrylic paints and Smith would go on and just layer them on top of another basically woving a real sock out of real paint. And as I said I do think that this is a fucking brilliant cover. I love it so so much. It is so simple. It has everything that I love about a cover. 
Again, another reason for why I like Adam Hart Mother by Pink Floyd so much, it has a subject that has nothing to do with anything, no text on it, just one thing to feast and hold your eyes upon. So unfortunately, Henry Cow, you're gonna have to do more than this in order to get my honest appreciation, so for now, I'm gonna give this album a fine rating of 7 out of 10. But that's about it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're gonna be continuing what we've started just two days ago and we'll be listening to the album UK by the band UK. I of course want to thank my lovely supporters over on Patreon, so thank you so much to Clay Wanham, Rist of Kings and Lindsay Haycox. You guys are just the best and if any of you want to support me over on Patreon you can find the link down in the description or in my about page. But that's about it guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.